Alright guys, welcome to RC Mojo. Last week we started the Sand Scorcher build and assembled the gearbox. So this week we're putting together the torsion bar rear suspension and doing the finishing touches to the gearbox, which should be fun. Right, we're starting at step two, the arms and bars. We'll be needing the rear arms, two BG9 shafts, four M3 by three grub screws, the two torsion bars and the gearbox. Right, first, so we don't lose them, we'll thread the grubs into the holes in the arms just a couple of turns. No thread lock yet, but we'll get to that once it's all been set up. The two arms are identical, so we need to make sure the grubs go into what becomes the lower holes. There's a bit of a knack to fitting the bars on the arms. Doing it in the right order makes it so much easier. The two bars are slightly different, so make sure to match up with the diagram so you know you have the right one for the right side. Then we pass the small end through the hole in the gearbox along with the tube, offer up the arm and pass the bar through the hole again along with the tube, wobble the arm into place so it lines up with the holes and work the tube in so it acts as a hinge pin. Get it so the bent end of the bar sits in the groove in the arm. Next at the back we insert one of the BG9s from the rear so the flat sits under the grub on the arm. Nip up the grub screw so it stays put. Back at the front we need to adjust the tube so it's like the rear one and the flat is under the grub. And then again we nip up the grub. Now you might be wondering why I haven't used any of the grease as Tamiya tells us to. Well in my experience if you're going to run the old Tamiyas in dirt or sand you're better off keeping them grease free. The grease will attract all the dirt in the world and it'll grind away at the metal. It's also difficult to clean without stripping the assembly down. When it's dry you just need to give it a blast with some compressed air and you're pretty much good to go. Of course if you're running somewhere nice and clean grease is always a good idea. You just have to think as there's compromises either way. The other arm and the bar go in exactly the same way and I think it looks rather good. Lots of nice metal bits. Next we pop the grubs out one by one and add some thread lock. We need to make sure all the pins are in just the right spot and the front ends of the bars can sit in their slots. Nip up the grubs fairly tight and we're done with step two. Step three, drive shafts and motor. First up we have the two drive shafts, the brass tube that ties the ends of the torsion bars together, two bearings, two five by five grub screws, two 3x18 cap heads, one 3x12 cap head, and we're going to need two small body clips. Then of course there's the motor, and for plastic we need A1, the motor cover. Now before we get into the build proper, we need to fit the motor cover to the motor. Now it would just slide over the wires, except with the bullet connectors there's some silicon covers. If you just try and shove them straight through the holes in the cover, you're going to struggle. The trick is to pull the silicon bits from the connectors and move them down the wires. Then you can easily pop the connectors through the cover, push the silicon bits through, then once through you can position them over the connectors. Simple enough to do and easier to do first rather than when you're trying to fit the motor at the same time. Right, proper build. We need to fit the drive shafts. We need to rotate the gearbox so the holes in the UJ for the grub is visible. Then thread in a grub a couple of turns. Pop a drive shaft in, going through the end of the arm into the UJ, making sure the flat on the shaft is under the grub. Then nip up the grub, but do note we're not using any thread lock just yet. Then we can slot in a bearing, it should fit flush to the end of the arm. And to keep it from falling out, we use one of the small body clips in the hole across the drive shaft. Same on the other side, and now we can set up the UJs. Now it's important for the life of the UJs that they pivot in exactly the same place as the suspension arm. If they're a little bit off, they're going to wear very quickly. We need to make sure the pins in the UJ line up with the pins in the suspension arm. Now this is actually really simple to do. We need to remove the grubs and add some thread lock, but keep them all just ever so slightly loose so they can move on the shaft. Then to align them we simply move the arms up and down and the UJs will naturally find just the right spot. Nip up the grubs and they should be good to go. You can now turn the gearbox and see how it feels. 
Usually if the UJs are out of position, you'll feel the gearbox ever so slightly go stiff and loose, stiff and loose as the UJs bind up. Of course, this is Tamiya, so the tolerances are pretty big and loose, so the chances are it's going to be just fine either way, but it doesn't hurt to be sure. OK, motor next, and all we do is stick it in the big hole in the gearbox. Except there's no traditional motor mounting screws. Instead, there's a couple of nubs inside that need to line up with the holes in the end of the motor. If you pop the motor in and turn it, you'll feel it drop into place. The motor should be fairly well locked in. If you can still rotate it, you've got the nubs in the wrong holes. To keep it in, all we do is offer up the cover to the gearbox and install the three screws. The two long ones go at the bottom and the short one goes at the top. Nip them up and that's the motor in. Looking at the other side, you should find the end of the motor is all but flush with the metal of the gearbox. If it's not and you've had trouble getting the cover in place, you've probably not got the nubs matched up with the motor. OK, step four, pinion and spur. Now the kit comes with two spurs and two pinions for a choice of two ratios. It will be running on a 2S LiPo, which is a bit more oomph than the old NICAD packs, so we're going to go with a low ratio with the small pinion and big spur. You'll get some more speed with the high ratio, but to be honest, without some suspension mods, the low ratio is going to be plenty fast enough off-road. For the other bits, we need two M3x10 cap heads, a 3x6 cap head, one 3x3 grub screw, an M3 washer, and a 2x10 shaft or pin. To assemble, we first need to add a tiny bit of thread lock to the grub screw and gently screw it into the small pinion just a turn or so. Pop it onto the motor shaft with the teeth inwards and we can gently nip it up. Just enough so it's not going to fall off. We're going to be adjusting the position in just a minute. Next we slide the pin in through the hole in the gearbox input shaft. Try and get it nicely in the middle, then we can pop on the big spur gear. It should locate over the pin. If you gently press the spur gear and rotate it, you should feel it drop into place. To hold the spur in, we use the long screw and washer. Pop the washer over the screw and add a spot of thread lock to the threads. Hold the spur and thread in the screw to the end of the shaft and tighten. It's steel on steel, so there's not that much chance of stripping anything, but all the same, just do it up snug, plus a bit extra. Now we can loosen the grub in the pinion and centre it up on the spur. We want the teeth set so they're nicely lined up. When it's spot on, nip up the grub. The mesh is fixed, of course, so there's no worries there. If anything, it's ever so slightly loose, but I'm sure it'll be just fine. OK, the last bit to do today is the gear cover A2. It just goes over the gears and gets attached with two long screws and the two short. Tamiya do want us to use some grease on the gears, which is fine. The gears are fairly well covered against grit and dirt, so it's not really going to hurt. The thing is though, you want to use just a trace amount. A couple of tiny smears is all it needs. And there we go, one rear suspension gearbox assembly complete. Well, nearly. Next time there's the roll bar and dampers, which will fully complete it but that'll be for next time. As always then, thanks for watching, like if you like, subscribe if you haven't, and leave a comment if there's something on your mind. Bye guys!